Those pictures are shocking. How significant in this relatively unspoilt area, untouched by man, that we're seeing all this plastic now? It's hugely significant. Um, Galapagos is um, renowned for being a um, living laboratory, if you like, mm. a, a melting pot for scientific discovery, and it's hugely important. Um, you've got a, um, it's famous for its endemic species, and plastics are affecting endemic species and the wildlife of Galapagos. So we've been working with the Galapagos National Park and the Galapagos Science Centre to really look at where the plastic's coming from so we can find a solution to it, how much is actually entering into the system. I mean, we all know about the awful problem of single-use plastics, don't we? We'll try and do our bit, but out there, you're doing some good work, aren't you? What are you doing out there? We are. So we're working with the local community groups and also the local government. The Governing Council of Galapagos is doing a lot. So they are actually phasing in a ban on single-use plastic items. So they're looking at um, plastic straws, um, bottles, T-shirts and also takeaway containers. Yeah, talk to me about this, because it's this biological kind of melting pot. You're like, there's so much going on there. What are kind of wildlife are being affected? Yeah, so it is famous for its endemic species. So you have the Darwin finches. You've mentioned Darwin, and, you know, it was the um, area that came up where, which um, inspired his theory of evolution. So you've got um, flightless cormorants, Darwin finches, the Galapagos sea lion that we saw in your report. And there has been reports of 18 species already affected by plastic, nice. whether they're being ingested, the plastic plastics being ingested or entanglement. So it is a major problem in Galapagos. No, it's such a major problem, not just there, but all around the world. How hopeful are we that we can turn back the tide now? We have a unique opportunity in Galapagos to solve this problem. Um, it is isolated, as you mentioned, mm. and it is relatively small. And we think there's limited inputs of plastic in Galapagos. So we've got this unique opportunity with international scientists helping us to solve this problem. So we need to look at where it's coming from, where it's de being deposited, and looking, up at, looking for the best cleanup methods. So we have got a huge opportunity. And we can test and develop methodologies in Galapagos that can be used elsewhere around the world. Listen, let's hope we can make a difference. Uh, Sharon Johnson, thank you for joining me this lunchtime. Thank you.